Okay, we're going to get started. Uh, we delayed it for a couple of minutes, but I'm kind of a stickler for starting things on time. And uh, I'd like to welcome you on behalf of the RBA, the Rutland Business Association. The RBA has done this for several years whenever there is a contested race. Last year, everyone ran unopposed. So we did not do a candidate's night. But for many years, we have done it, and it's one of the best things that I think the RBA does, and we certainly enjoy uh, putting it on, we enjoy meeting the candidates, and we enjoy getting the uh, townspeople here together. So my name is Addison Redfield, for any of you who don't know me. I used to live here in town, and the RBA has paid me big bucks to come back here tonight to do this. So Now, we're going to start off by asking our town moderator, Margaret Nardowitz, to give us about 15 minutes of uh, information. And uh, I'm not going to steal your thunder. I'll let you tell us what you're going to tell us. Thank you, Addison. And thank you to the Rutland Business Association for, for hosting this, this great event. This is a, a great uh, informational event that helps the community understand the philosophies and the approach of, of the candidates. Um, I was asked by the Rutland Business Association to present uh, a little bit of information on first the FY19 uh, budget picture. Uh, so for candidates who are going to be up here speaking, I want to listen. Um, and uh, the a little bit about the Board of Selectmen's relationship with the town ad administrator, how, how we work together. So first, um, uh, I think as much as I like to ad lib, I think it's important to kind of stick to the script, especially uh, with, with the uh, budget information here. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading um, tonight. Uh, but first, uh, on next Monday, May 7th, uh, mark your calendars. Right in this room, we're going to have a pre-town meeting budget forum and in uh, a discussion on uh, special and annual town meeting articles and a Q and A on those on those articles. So everybody can have an opportunity to ask questions before town meeting and have a little bit of a better understanding of the the budget situation that we're that we're facing for the coming year. Uh, so everyone here is probably well aware of the chronic challenges the town has had um, uh, with education budget assessment growth over the past several years and how it's um, outpaced and eroded municipal uh, department budgets. That combined with uh, limited uh, revenue generation each year, each year of course borne uh, primarily by residential taxpayers has resulted in a perennial recipe for negative impacts to municipal operating budgets and continued threats to the town's ability to sustain its public services. These impacts have manifested in limited increases or stagnation in funding for the Council on Aging, the Board of Health, the Library, Public Safety, Public Works, and most other town departments. As impactful have been the, has been the town's struggle as an employer to provide fair and equitable wages to its non-union employees. A recent wage study of other municipalities in the region with similar populations proved that the wages of many of our non-union positions have fallen well behind those of comparable positions. It goes without saying, the consequences of this over a period of years include low morale, potential unionization, or losing valued employees to other employers. The town currently faces a potential FY19 operating budget gap of over $133,000. This after having to reduce a number of initial operating budget requests, including over $70,000 in new requests for capital equipment leases for a new ambulance to replace the town's 2008 ambulance and a new police cruiser. These two items are instead being presented together to voters as a debt exclusion to fund the needed equipment. Now, residents can actually visit the town website. We've put up tax-related um, tax information on the website on the town election, the, uh, the town election webpage, as well as tax impact calculators where you can plug in your FY18 assessed value and calculate the estimated tax rate uh, adjustment uh, for the debt exclusion and also for a, uh, a large capital exclusion that's, uh, that's going to be presented for the Wachusett High School turf field replacement project. 
To be clear, if the capital lease requests remained on the budget, that $70,000 along with the $133,000 in operating costs I noted earlier would be subject to potential operating budget reductions. This would also be true for any other initial operating budget requests that came uh, earlier in the budget process and were removed in order to lessen this gap. In the coming year, the town must establish a plan to begin programmatically funding equipment replacement, uh, equipment replacement moving forward, particularly large high cost equipment uh, that generally uh, fire department and DPW have, large trucks and, and other large equipment. Other than non-union wage corrections described earlier and limited increase in, in, increases in staff hours for inspection services, the assistant town clerk, and the children's librarian, all totaling less than $46,000, there are just two new high-priority operating initiatives remaining in the requested municipal budget. A full-time planner and economic development coordinator to provide much-needed professional expertise and support to the planning board and the dan to the town moving uh, excuse me moving forward and streamline permitting software that would establish an automated checks and balances system to assure compliance with and completion of all internal reviews on projects and permits prior to issuance these initiatives would begin to address the town's ability to manage rapid growth in the short and long term in a reduced budget scenario, among other reductions across municipal departments, the planner's hours would be reduced to part-time, the streamlined permitting system and non-union wage equity corrections would be eliminated, and the requested increases in staff hours would be reduced. As an employer and an organization whose mission it is to serve the public to the best of our ability, we have to look long and hard at the wide-ranging impacts of year-on-year -year budget reductions. That's it for my budget spiel for tonight. You can hear more on May 7th. So <laughs> everyone will have a chance to, to speak. Um, now, on to uh, the Board of Selectmen and Administrators uh, working relationship, how we work together. Um, you, you probably all know that this, that this administrator position is a newly formed position. I am the first ever administrator here. So there's been uh, somewhat of a, a cultural shift and a, um, and a learning curve over the past few years. The Board of Selectmen has extensive legal and fiduciary duties and responsibilities under hundreds of state laws and local bylaws. In fact, the Board's status as chief executive body in a town is recognized by the Constitution of the Commonwealth, which lays out the Board's duties to call town meetings and elections and submit proposals to adopt or revise a town charter to voters according to an established process. As important as the Board's many duties and responsibilities prescribed by law, is its civic responsibility to the entire community at all times. The board is a public body under law and should operate as a collective decision-making body in the best interest of the town. When the Rutland Town Administrator position was established and subsequently funded by town meeting, the future administrative course of the town was changed. It was then that the board and the entire community committed to recognizing that a new central administrative function and organizational structure would be established. The town administrator's statutory duties are generally governed by General Law Chapter 41, Section 23A, which prescribes that the administrator shall act by and for the selectmen in any matter which they may assign relating to the administration of the affairs of the town or of any town office or department under their supervision and control. In other words, the administrator is entrusted by the board to serve as its agent for all town affairs on a day-to-day -day basis to assure the proper administration of town government. And while the administrator is responsible for carrying out administrative duties, the board is appropriately the executive body that leads the community in a broad policy role. The town's code of conduct and ethics for boards, committees, and commissions generally describes this basic responsibility to make policy rather than administer it. Individual board members and the administrator can and sometimes do communicate with each other outside of meetings, but as the administrator, I should receive administrative or operational directives for myself or for departments under the board's jurisdiction from the entire board or from the board chair with the authorization from the board. <laughs> Board members can also communicate with, with each other outside of meetings, provided they comply with the open meeting law and other laws relevant to their status, status as special municipal employees 
and as members of a public body. The administrator and the board chair should regularly communicate with regard to setting the board's meeting agendas, keeping the chair informed of administrative matters, and conveying labor, legal, and other important information requiring the board's attention in a timely manner. As with all individual members, the chair has the authority to act independently of the board, only if authorized by the board. There's understandably been a learning curve over the past few years, as would be expected with a first ever town administrator. A strong mutual understanding and, res and respect between the select board and administrator regarding their respective responsibilities and a steadfast commitment to positive and productive municipal leadership is essential. And it will strengthen effective town governments, governance and the ongoing health and vitality of this wonderful community. Thank you. That's all I have. I'm sure many of you have questions for Margaret. However, she is not going to take any questions tonight because you will have an ample opportunity on what date again? Monday, May 7th, 7 p.m. right in this room. How about that? <laughs> now, um, Margaret, um, I, I wonder if I can ask you all to stand for a minute. This is a kind of a special day for Margaret, and uh, I love embarrassing people. So we're going to do that right now. You are? We are. This is Margaret's birthday today. Oh. <laughs> and oh my gosh. Thank you. And I would like you to join me in a rousing rendition of happy birthday to Margaret. <laughs> All together now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Margaret. Happy birthday to you. Don't ask me how old I am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay, getting on with the uh, rest of the evening. We're here to hear the candidates. And we have some rules, what we call the rules of the night. All candidates are invited to introduce themselves. Only candidates who are, are um, vying for a contested office are asked to speak or allowed to speak. Candidates for contests are allowed five minutes each. Making note of that? There will be written questions taken from the floor, sorted and directed as requested, and they will be presented. Each candidate will be allowed to respond to each question, and there will be an opportunity to say a final word regarding your candidacy with a limit of three minutes. Okay, anybody have any questions on that? Good. All right, we're gonna take the candidates in the order that they are on the town clerk's um, listing, and we're gonna start with the town moderator, who I think is here. I'll let you introduce yourself. Thank you to the RBA for having this wonderful evening. I think it's a great opportunity to let people uh, learn about what's going on. So thank you, Addison, to the RBA for having us tonight. My name is Randy Jordan, and I am up for re-election for the Office of Town Moderator. It is a one-year um, annual election, and this will be my fifth or sixth year, seventh year or so as moderator, and I enjoy giving back to the town and helping through moderatorship here in the town of Rutland, so please come out and vote on May 14th. May, no, it's not the town meeting? No. May 14th. Please come out and vote on May 14th. So, thank you. Thank you, Randy. Okay, now the, uh, the next office is the Board of Selectmen, and I'd like to have the three um, uh, people who, four, no, it's three, three, three candidates for the Board of Selectmen to come up and take a seat. And we're going to go in the order your name is uh, on the list. And we'll start with uh, Jeff Stillings. All right. Thank you. 
So uh, I'm Jeff Stillings, candidate for uh, Rutland Selectman. I'd like to also thank the Rutland Business Association for hosting tonight and providing this forum to be heard. I'm not a politician, nor do I care to be one. I'll do my best to try to describe who I am and why I'm running for the position. Rutland is home to me. I grew up here. I went to Naquag. I attended Wachusett before that. Kindergarten at the American Legion Post on Memorial uh, Field and primary school of first and second grade at the primary school. Both have since disappeared. Many of you may know my family. We lived in the small stone house on the top of Central Tree Road. We used to be the first house on the left. It was a dirt road. We had no house numbers. We lived across from the Watt Farm where I did my first job haying fields for $2 per hour. I know every square inch of land between Central Tree Road and the Muscapog Reservoir through hunting, target shooting, and riding my dirt bikes. We rode thousands of miles of trails through the old state sanatorium, which is now the Skyline Drive area. We used to snowmobile, toboggan, and sled across the street on the Watt Farm. That's also now a subdivision. We'd sneak our mini bikes up the Woody's gas station at Main Street in Glenwood to fill up our tanks. Although not old enough to drink, I knew every bar in town. There was the, the Redwood, on Central Tree Road, and then the Big Three on Route 122, the Beef and Bourbon, the Oxbow, and the Birches, where you could get the world's best cheeseburger on white bread for two bucks and the world's best French fries for a dollar at the Birches. Both, all three of those are now gone. I've been a member of the Rutland Fire Brigade since 1983. At age 19, I served as an EMT lieutenant on the RFD ambulance. I even was the dog officer for a couple of years. I remember both hospitals and transported patients as an EMT back in the day from Rutland Heights Hospital. These were impressionable years that helped shape me into the man I am today. I am grateful to the town for this experience. So I'm here tonight representing old Rutland and new Rutland. I remember the way things were, although I only go back to 1967. For the past 30 years, I've worked in law enforcement like my father before me. I've moved around the country since 1995, and a few years ago, I had the chance to come back home, and I gratefully did so for family. And I chose to move back to Rutland because Rutland is home. My family is here, and we are Rutland. Last year, I had the privilege of participating in the resume screening committee and also the interview panel for the Rutland Chief of Police candidates. I really enjoyed the team interaction, and that is what sparked my interest in becoming more involved in the matters of the town. I'm also proud to have received the endorsement of the Rutland Police Association. This, I believe, is one of the best departments I have seen. I've been told that the key to leading a meaningful life is to be of service to others. As a lifelong learner with common sense, I will listen to the people's needs and translate it into results that are actionable, and all, only and always in the best interest of our town. I support our municipal employees, especially the police, fire, our school teachers, and the DPW. My life has been surrounded by public service. I am willing to serve my hometown again. That is my agenda. I regularly attend the select board meetings. Some months ago, I was troubled by a decision of the board not to respect the chief police request to promote his choice for sergeant. The request was denied in a split vote. It was at that moment that I wished I was on the other side of the bench so I could play a greater role in the decisions of the town. That was the moment that I decided to run for selectman. Since then, I've been listening. People are concerned about the growth, the congestion, our water and sewer, and all the new residences that are adding to the school's population. Families on a fixed income, as I will soon be, are concerned about their property taxes rising. We must manage the tax rate. To do so, I would support commercial, more commercial and senior community growth over more residential building, tax incentives, tax abatements to attract new businesses. I like the idea of a market basket at Rutland Heights Hospital and a volunteer grant writer to help bring in revenue. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Next on the list is Leah Whiteman. 
My name is Leah Whiteman. I'm also running for Board of Selectmen. Um, I wanted to also thank Addison and the Rutland Business Association for holding this awesome night and for all of you for attending. Um, I'm a newbie. I've been in town for seven years, almost eight years. Um, I didn't grow up in Massachusetts. I grew up in Pennsylvania, Southern Pennsylvania, Amish country. We've lost a lot of our farms to commercial development and uh, residential development. We moved to Rutland. My husband grew up in Holden. We moved to Rutland for the community, the, si the sense of community, the school district, um, the proximity to family, uh, and the farms, and the, the natural resources that we have out here. Um, so while my history isn't deep here, I feel like I have a lot of connections in town. And I'm willing to listen to all of you and hear your hopes and desires for the town. I don't have the history of what's been done and hasn't worked. And so I'm willing to try things. I'm willing to listen to you. I'm willing to try. Um, I think that bringing fresh eyes and fresh voice onto the board isn't a bad thing. Um, do I have a learning curve? Sure. I think we all should have a learning curve. <laughs> um, and I really just want to work for you. So I think it's important that we support our municipal employees, um, fire and police, as well as DPW and the schools themselves. Um, but we also need to be mindful of the fixed incomes of our seniors, as well as all of the new families. Our taxes are still going up also, and that's a strain for us. So how can we manage that? look to commercials, commercial businesses to bring in some tax revenue, um, and really some outside of the box thinking. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do for you, serve you, the town of Rutland. Um, so thanks for giving me the opportunity. Thank, thank you, Leah. And uh, last but not least is uh, a current um, select board member running for re-election, Michael Pantos. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for coming out this evening. I think uh, the board selectman is one of the most important uh, positions uh, here in the town, uh, along with the town administrator. I think she eloquently uh, described on our, what our fiduciary duties are and as uh, leadership roles. I uh, want to make sure I take the opportunity to thank the uh, RBA uh, for the hosting this tonight. And also, most importantly, uh, my lovely wife, Anne Marie, who's in the audience, who has endured uh, the last three terms of uh, my Monday nights uh, not being there and Thursday nights with FinCom. So uh, thank you, honey, for your support, and I appreciate that. Um, the poor selectman is a very challenging position here for our town. We are very fortunate to have a, what Rutland was, is a Rutland uh, farming community. We have grown uh, quite a bit. Uh, I came to Rutland in 1992, built our first house. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Seth uh, actually painted our house uh, when he was doing construction. And that's when I first got a chance to meet uh, Seth. And now he's our fire chief. And enjoy, uh, really enjoyed that relationship. Uh, and uh, we were fortunate enough to uh, raise our family here. And because of that, I decided to uh, give back to the community to retain its uh, community spirit that we have. I, there's no other town, surrounding town that has the spirit that Rutland has or the residents uh, with the spirit of township uh, that we have here in town. We have a lot of challenges. One of them, most importantly, as you may have watched on the FinCom, is finances, and Margaret eloquently uh, stated that. Unfortunately, it goes back to a state formula. We are being forced to make decisions between the rising costs in school education at the Wachusett Regional School District versus public services. And since I've been on the board each and every year, that has been a pinning situation, municipal services financing the school. The town is uh, held to a 2.5% uh, increase on taxes, Prop 2.5, passed statewide. The regional school districts are not. I have not seen a legislator, take a state legislator, take the opportunity to introduce legislation to mandate that those regional school districts follow the same guidelines that all the municipalities have. That's the quick and easy fix, but unfortunately, that has not been uh, undertaken. They've talked about fixing the formula, they do this, they do that, 
but the core pro our problem is, from where I see it, is the inequity <coughs> between revenue and uh, what the town is able to raise and appropriate, as well as the expenses. Yes, uh, the other concern is, uh, as a lot of the population here in town uh, is aging, as I am. I used to have a full head of hair, and it was brown when we started uh, eight years ago. But as time goes on, uh, we continue to grow, and the needs of the community infrastructure are many. Water, sewer, fire, police, the cruiser, the ambulance, uh, the DPW trucks. Um, I've been uh, working on those projects uh, with uh, the rest of the board members uh, for quite a few years. And one of the best things I can say is that uh, three years ago, we were fortunate enough to, with the town's backing uh, to support funding a town administrator and uh, uh, being able to hire Margaret to take the leadership role. We're all pie timers. We all have on the board at least four out of five of us, full-time positions that uh, we manage on a day-to-day -day basis and try to do the best we could uh, with the help uh, we had Jackie at the time helping us out and doing the day-to-day -day, uh, in order to keep the town running. That has all changed. The dynamics of the town change, as Margaret illustrated, uh, you know, there's been an adjustment period. And it's always nice to be able to pick up the phone, either from us to Margaret or Margaret to us, uh, to uh, keep us abreast of what's going in the town. I do not think I was going to be running for this semester, this three-year uh, term. Uh, I thought that last, this term, my last term was going to be the last term. But current and cert, uh, certain events that have transpired over the last year um, have pretty much said to me that uh, I need to stay for another term. Uh, I do make, and I say this very uh, candidly, uh, plan to be my last term. Um, as a selectman. I also am running as a uh, school committee member, uh, and that I will also be my last term. Thank you for coming out tonight, and thank you for your consideration uh, and your vote. I'd just like to remind you all that uh, we will be taking questions. If uh, you don't have a card or a piece of paper, raise your hand and Dennis will be happy to pass it out to you. And uh, we're going to uh, allow the questions to be answered by all of the candidates, not just the uh, three select board candidates. So at the, uh, after when we take a break, when everybody has been heard and you come back from the break, we're going to seat you all up here on the firing line, okay? Now, the, uh, the next uh, job is assessor, and uh, Jeff Gibbs is running unopposed, and he is not here, unless I'm blind. Okay, so, and uh, after that comes the town clerk, and Anita is here, running for re-election. Hi, good evening, everybody, and I would like to um, say thank you to the RBA. Uh, this has been a good forum for quite a few years. I can't remember how many that they have held these evenings. Uh, I'm Anita K. Carlson, and I am running for, I've been town clerk since 2014, but I have been in the town clerk office since 1999. I kind of hate to admit it's been that long, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, I just want to point out that on the town website, you can find uh, copies of, there is a sample ballot for the uh, election that's coming up on May 14th, and the polls are open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. that day. And we've also posted uh, the warrants for both the special town meeting and the annual town meeting. So you can find lots of information there. Thank you. Oh, one more thing. And for those who aren't going to be in town on the 14th, absentee ballots are available through our office. And you, through Thursday, May 10th at 4.30, you can apply for an absentee ballot. Thank you, Anita. <laughs> okay, next is the Board of Health and Scott Gilroy. Is Scott here? I don't no. think so. No. Okay, he's running unopposed also. And for library trustees, we actually have uh, three people running for three seats, so it's not going to be much of a contest. <laughs> but uh, why don't we start off with uh, Daniel Keeney. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. 
<clears throat> My name is Dan Keeney. I'm originally from uh, Worcester, born and brought up, graduated Worcester State, and uh, f made a living in the pharmacy field for the better part of five decades, and, and lived all over the country in doing that. Uh, most recently, I've retooled myself into a real estate agent, and now I'm actively involved in, in doing that work, helping people in this uh, very uh, busy real estate market. Um, I married a Rutland resident about five years ago um, and moved to Rutland at that time. I had actually met Teresa at back at Worcester State uh, back in 1970 and married her 44 years later. It isn't that it took me that long to make a decision. I know, <laughs> I know about guys and their uh, commitment, uh, you know, a failure to commit or that kind of thing. But no, she's a sweetheart and she's the best thing that ever happened to me. But in any case, I, I use or utilize the library services a great deal. Um, you know, the folks there are first rate. Carrie's done a great job. Uh, I look forward to just giving back to the community and because um, I use the library a lot, those folks uh, get books for me from everywhere. Um, so if I may, if a picture is worth a thousand words, may I just hand, just ask these to be handed out? Or? Why don't you leave them on the okay. table, people? Okay, that I will do. Up. Thank okay. you, Dan. Thanks, Addison. Thanks, everybody. And Jean Grant. Is Jean here? Jean Grant? I guess not. Well, I see Ed down there. Ed, can you come forward? Introduce yourself. I'm sure everybody knows who you are, but we'd love to hear your hear your voice. That's what you asked. Do I need to use a microphone? No. Oh, okay. We're not on TV or anything. We are. Oh, all right. You know what? In that case, thank you. You don't have to close. Oh, okay. Uh, my name is Edward. Many people know me as Ted Purcell. I am running for the library board. I would like to thank the RBA for this opportunity. Um, I have been on the library board in the past. Uh, there were open seats, and I am coming hoping to come back on the library board to continue to serve. This place is important to the town and it needs advocates and I'm <coughs> hoping to be able to do that again. Thank you. Planning board for I think five year five year seat. <coughs> You know, when I was on the planning board and I was elected the first time, I said, I hope I live to be able to serve out my term. So, <laughs> Marilyn? Good evening. My name is Marilyn Sedoti. I'm running for re-election to the planning board. I've been on the board for about seven years. I think I've uh, filled in for someone who moved to the select board, actually. And I'm also uh, the chairman of the bylaws subcommittee, so uh, I don't have a speech since you said I could only announce my name and what I was running for, but I, I have enjoyed being on the planning board and I think it's important to uh, help to you know, direct the city, the town, in the direction of, of, uh, of uh, the, you know, the directions that we need, would like to see it go in, and I would like the town to know a little bit more about the planning board and that we actually have to follow the rules of the state and the bylaws of the town, so we, you know, at, uh, have function in a prescribed direction. So, anyway, as I say, I'm running for re-election to the planning board. Thank you. Okay, next up is the Wachusett School Committee. <laughs> and unfortunately, there are two seats open on the school committee, and there is no one running. 
So I'm going to invite you tonight, if anybody wants to run for school committee, <laughs> we'll allow you to come up, throw your hat in the ring as a write-in candidate, and you can have your five-minute speech. Or is it three-minute speech? <laughs> Any takers? <laughs> OK. Um, all right, last but not least is the uh, Southern Worcester County Vocational School District. And uh, uh, one opening for three years, and uh, Michael Pantos again. <laughs> you know, only introduce yourself this yeah. time. Again, uh, Mike Pantos, uh, Chairman of the Southern Worcester County Regional School District, otherwise known as Bay Path, the Regional Vocational High School. That's where we send our children uh, from the, our town, Paxton, and we are members of the Bay Path community for vocational education. This year we are at 36 students uh, going in as freshmen, and uh, I've been honored to serve the town uh, to one of the best committees uh, that I've had the pleasure of being with and chairing. Uh, we have a 20-member board. Our average meeting lasts an hour and 15 to an hour and a half. And we do as much in that hour 15 to an hour and a half that our sister regional school committee takes every other week three hours to accomplish. Um, so I'm very proud of that uh, accomplishment. And we come into town budget um, in line uh, with the town's uh, budget requirements. Uh, this will be my last term on the Bay Path School Committee. This will be 15, uh, after completing this upcoming term, 15 years. And uh, it's time for someone else to uh, come in. i um, hoping a uh, dear friend that uh, served on the Board of Selectmen would consider taking my spot there. Uh, but uh, we'll see uh, if we can uh, convince them of that. Um, thank you for your time. Can't shut a politician up. <laughs> okay, uh, we're going to take a, a short break. We have some refreshments in the back, and perhaps Margaret will share some of her birthday cake. <laughs> um, and and we would like to collect the questions. We'll go through them and uh, try to um, condense them a little bit so we don't take too much time. And uh, please help yourselves with coffee and stuff. Okay, if we could get everybody back. We'll continue. Folks, we'd like to reconvene. We'd like to reconvene, please. Have time to drink your coffee and have your cake and eat it. Folks, Asa wants to get it going. All right, as we have all the candidates down here, please. All of the candidates. <laughs> Marilyn, that means you. Anita, that also means you. Of course. Does Randy have to come up? Of course. Randy. Of course he does. <laughs> I think we're out. Okay. Dan? You have a seat? <laughs> Did we lose anyone? Ted. Ted. Okay. Ted. Oh, Ted. Yeah. He left? I think he left. Okay. Yes, he did. All right. We, uh, we don't have a lot of questions, and uh, I'm just going to throw them out. Um, And we'll just go right down the line. How's that? First one, can you please tell me about your past experience working in municipal government? Come here, you can come up here. It's here. My uh, past experience, as I mentioned earlier, is uh, uh, about seven years on the planning board. Uh, as I said, I filled out someone else's term and then was elected for my own. And it's a five-year term on the planning board. So 
I would be around for quite a while if I get reelected. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. So my, that's basically uh, my experience in, is in Rutland on the planning board. Thank you. Mike? My experience started uh, working uh, back in 1987 as a uh, administrator for the school bus services for Aspen Valley Regional Vocational High School in Marlboro. Uh, that was the first time I was exposed to uh, public government and municipalities uh, and uh, just a little prior to that uh, with the Worcester Regional Transit Authority, which I now serve on the board uh, representing our town. Uh, other than that, my other experiences have been on the select board for the last uh, eight years and 12 years uh, with uh, serving and representing the town to Bay Path Regional Vocational High School. Leah? Like I said, I'm kind of a newbie. Um, I don't have any formal experience. I've been, a, since we've moved to town uh, almost eight years ago, I've attended almost every town meeting and special town meeting. Um, and I've attended a lot of the um, Wachusett Regional budget discussions and everything like that as well. So I don't have any formal experience, but I've kind of been around, um, follow the Board of Selectmen meetings, either minutes posted online or on the cable channel or um, attending as well. Anita. Well, as I said earlier, I started in the town clerk's office in 1999, but at that same time, um, the offices were combined with the treasurer collector. So I also worked in the treasurer collector's office for a number of years, and I did a small, small, maybe two-year stint at the DPW even. So, and prior to my life in town government, um, way back when my kids were in school, I was on at least two school building committees, um, the one for Central Tree and a NAQUAG edition. Jeff? I am municipal government, so of my, uh, <laughs> Of the 50 years I've been on this earth, 35 have been in some capacity serving. Uh, at age 15, when we were allowed to join the fire department at 15, I was all in. Uh, from there, I was the dog catcher at age 18. Two years later, I was on the West Boylston Police Department. I was a cop for seven years, and then I went federal. And uh, so I've been with the feds for, uh, I'm a federal employee is my official answer for the last 23 years. This is the first time I've uh, stepped over that line to try to serve in a, an elected capacity. So, it's exciting. Thank you. Dan? I have no experience in the municipal arena. However, I have plenty of experience at the state level. I was a lobbyist at the state level <clears throat> in California, Ohio, West Virginia, and Michigan. So um, I have plenty of experience working with state legislators, governors, executive branch personnel. Um, but on a humorous note, I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell my mother that I was a lobbyist <laughs> because she thinks I was a piano player in a brothel. <laughs> and I don't want to ruin her image, so thank you. Randy? I've been town moderator in municipal government now for six or seven years, and I helped on the highway department as a wintertime plowing help. Other than that, I've been involved in leadership positions through the Grange and through FFA, and in the church across the street, I cried my first time I got in front of the pulpit and spoke in church, so. <laughs> had to start somewhere. Don't forget the brigade. Brigade. There you go. Okay, the next one is, uh, what are your thoughts on a managed growth bylaw? Why don't we start from, from uh, your side, if you have anything to say about it. If you, if you don't want to answer those qu any of these questions, that's fine, you can pass. Can, can I turn the card over and look at it again? No. Okay. <laughs> Management growth, cows all the way, no more houses. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would like to take a shot at that? Jeff? So it's my understanding that the town attempted a managed growth bylaw a few years ago. It did not get the two-thirds vote that it needed for whatever reason. I am in favor of re-exploring that, uh, that position because of all the things that Margaret said in her fiscal 19, you know, state of the town address. Uh, I think we need to re-explore, revisit the conversation about managed growth. Um, and if that includes snob zoning, 
then let's have that conversation. Thank you. Leah? I think that um, following on the heels of what Jeff just said, I think it's important to reopen that conversation. The town has changed a lot within the past few years. Um, and I've, you know, I think that it doesn't hurt to have that conversation, reopen it, and see uh, what what the possibilities are. So I'm definitely in favor of opening that discussion and looking at ways we can move forward. Does anyone else want to take a shot at that? Okay. I'll go after. Hi, as the uh, chairman of the bylaw subcommittee to the planning board, you know, I would certainly be very happy to open up looking at managed growth. It's not something that I really know a lot about at this point in time, but I would certainly be willing to explore that. And just to go back to some of my comments on the first time around here, um, it is, you have to keep in mind that there are a lot of state and federal regulations around any kind of growth these days. So you, as I say, you need to keep that in mind that it's not just something you can run out and say, okay, we're gonna manage growth, growth in town. Thank you. Mike? Sure. As we continue to grow, uh, we definitely need to have a conversation uh, with respect to managed growth. and. Uh, tap some of the resources that are available to us, such as Central Regional Planning Commission out of Worcester. Uh, they have the expertise and the folks, and uh, also we can learn from other communities in the area uh, as far as what they've done and how they've handled it. Uh, we are in a little bit of a unique situation because of geography. We're landlocked. As far as transportation, we've tried to develop the Rutland Heights Hospital property for quite a few years. In order to get trucks here, they have to go through Paxton to get to Worcester. If you have, in order to get trucks here, you have to go through Holden to get to Worcester. So really the only industry that we currently have is housing, transportation, and is building homes. And the reason we're such a desirable location is because of our community, the spirit, and a very good educational system, both on the vocational and regular uh, Wachusa Regional School District. They have very high marks, they have great teachers, and have uh, provide a great product. You, uh, you know, cost is always an issue when it goes uh, to that. Uh, but we do offer a great product. Uh, just following up to Mr. Schilling's uh, statement on uh, Market Basket. Um, working in commercial real estate uh, a few years back with Mr. Gibbs, um, we don't have the demographics. And the location, it's not on 122A going to and from Worcester or Holden. Um, but at the same time, when we say we want to bring in a, a larger store or bring in a grocery store, what are we saying to the gentleman that's right down the street at Rutland Market who's put his sweat, tears, uh, and uh, hours in to develop that market to be a resource for our community? You know, uh, I thought we wanted to support small business. I don't see a big box uh, such as Market Basket coming to town, and primarily because of the demographics. Their model right now is to open a store off a major highway, 190 to 295, uh, as they did right off of 395 in Oxford, and build a plaza around it and have other anchors. That's their business model. Being landlocked in, uh, in Rutland isn't going to be bring them to here, and no matter what we give, even if we give the land away. It just doesn't support their business model or demographics for that business. Hey, Anita, did you want to say anything? Okay. Okay. Uh, again, I'll throw this out. Do you have any special interests in any department that you would oversee as a member of the BOS, uh, Board of Selectmen? I guess that's for the select board uh, candidates. Special interests would be you or a relative currently or formerly on staff as a paid town employee involved in a business interest that serves the town in any capacity or any other close ties that would be considered a potential conflict. Any of you like to handle that? I'll, no, I'll go. Um, I do not have any uh, relatives that are currently working for the town, nor any conflicts at all. Uh, at 
in my position as far as uh, currently with having a town administrator, we used to, prior to having a town administrator, have what we would call liaisons. I would, uh, we would divvy it up between the five members, the five different departments. One would be a liaison to DPW, one to fire, one to police. So that way we had constant communication and contact uh, with the board selectmen and the department heads felt they had someone to contact when equipment, uh, budget issues came up. At this point in time, uh, we don't have that uh, relationship. There's a department meeting. Margaret handles that as our full-time town administrator. Jeff or Leo, would you like to take that? Sure. I don't have any special interests at all. Um, we've been in town for seven, almost eight years, um, and I'm still learning who's who. So. Um, <laughs> And my husband grew up in Holden, but uh, yeah, we've been away from town for a while, moved back seven years ago. So like I said, I'm still really a newbie, so. Jeff? Sure. I do have a special interest. I couldn't be prouder to have such a conflict. My sister is a seventh grade teacher at Central Tree Middle School. Um, most of my family are, are teachers, either, either at the collegiate level or other schools. And uh, that's why I have a special place in my heart and a little bit protective of our school teachers, people who watch over our number one uh, asset, and that's our children. Anyone else? Okay. Um, this is, are you in favor of a mar market basket? I think that's already been answered. <laughs> This is similar to the uh, previous question. Do you have any conflicts of interest the voters should know about? Anybody? I think we've answered that. No? Yes? Clean living, clean record. I'm good. <laughs> OK. The last question is actually directed at the uh, uh, select board. Um, the person who wrote this is bothered by a decision with regards to the police department. Nick Monaco's qualifications to run the department but not to take his recommendation to promote one of his officers. And usually that kind of a recommendation from a chief is a given to making the appointment. Isn't it a good thing, in your opinion, that employees know there is a chance for advancement within their own town? Anybody? Jeff? That's good. Go ahead, Doug, and I'll follow. Uh, it's almost as if I wrote that question. I did not write that question, but I did touch upon it in my, uh, my opening remarks. Um, I, have, I have no beef with the way people vote. The, the select board have the right to vote the way they vote. Uh, so, that, you know, that's the rules that we have. Uh, I did, I was a little bit disturbed by the actual process of a chief coming forward uh, explaining that there was a candidate pool, a process. Uh, this is his number one candidate. My position is that we should support the chief, you know, all things aside of the candidate herself. So, my position was to support the chief. Uh, on that, and I, I said my piece and uh, moved on. But what, what do you do about it? I, like I said earlier, I did receive the endorsement of the Rutland Police Association. I met with the uh, Patrolmen's uh, Association, and I asked them, what is, what's important to you? What, what are your primary uh, goals? What's important? And uh, the first thing they said is, you know, they, they actually love this chief, and they want to see him protected. And, oh, excuse me. The, um, the first thing they wanted was, you know, better training, better benefits, small town. Uh, and, I, and I explained, well, you know, that's part of the union negotiation and the contract. But the second thing that was most important to them was the issue of a strong chief versus a weak chief. So myself, uh, how I responded to that is I did some research on the matter and uh, learned that there's a difference between the statutes that accept how the authority of our given chief 
is directed. Right now, the chief is under a weak chief system. Chapter 41, section 97 allows for what is called the strong chief. Now, the big difference between enacting a strong chief is that the chief would have oversight over employees, um, operations, and uh, the personnel, pretty much, and equipment. And for that, it requires a town vote only once a year at the, at the annual town meeting. So I did generate a petition, uh, a citizen petition, to have that matter put on the town warrant for May 12th to receive Chapter 41, Section 97, making our chief a strong chief by statute. That was important to the Patrolman's Association. I said, that's something that I can do, even as a citizen. And I did. I did do that. So um, that's where I stand on the issue. Thank you. Mike? I, unlike Jeff, uh, feel that there needs to be civilian oversight of, of the departments. I am not a f in favor of a strong chief. I believe that, uh, and I've had this conversation with Chief Monaco, and uh, I've, we've, he knows it. Uh, we've had the conversation one on one, so I'll gladly share it with you all. We had an interview process that, during the committee that Jeff represented, brought forward to the Board of Selectmen three great candidates. One of was the chief in town, and we also had a very strong candidate coming out of Starbridge. I thought uh, he was uh, one of the best candidates. I voted uh, for me uh, at that point, and I was uh, four to one uh, for that lieutenant to be hired as the new chief. At the same time, I also had the conversation and had uh, proposed that Nick rise to the occasion to the rank of lieutenant. I Nick is one of the youngest chiefs, and I had concerns coming out of the gate. I do believe in promotion from within, that he was green, experience-wise. He's been a patrolman, he's been a sergeant, and I've enjoyed working with him and negotiating contracts as a sergeant's contracts last time around, and also respect him for his abilities as a uh, sergeant in that position and feel has a lot of growth and opportunity there. But I did not support uh, at the beginning for him to become chief. I thought that the other individual would be come in, spend three or four years as chief, and uh, then Nick, be, uh, he was looking to go back to Sturbridge as a chief and uh, after several years of experience as a lieutenant to go to uh, the chief's position and give Nick some additional experience, administratively, grant writing, things of that nature, which uh, I don't know that he was exposed to uh, during his tenure as sergeant on 11th and 7th shift. Um, and I do believe uh, that the Board of Selectmen, if folks support or do not support the Strong Chief Amendment, the appointing authority still lies as a check and balance and designed by the state statute to reside with the Board of Selectmen. Um, so therefore, uh, you know, my position is um, once Nick was uh, given the vote and I voted to support him and I had the conversation with Nick, he has my, my full support and we want to give him the tools and resources to succeed in his position. I did not want to promote somebody into the position uh, that we were setting him up to fail because of not having the resources, time, experience, and background in that position. Seth came to us with that uh, background from the town of Hubbardston and had quite a few years uh, of experience uh, as chief for the uh, town of Hubbardston. Nick uh, has been, I think this is his eight years. But I do think highly of him, respect him in the profession, and think we'll, we'll, Nick will try to do uh, the best job possible for the town. He will seek out uh, the education and the skills, but it's going to take some time. That's my position uh, and why I voted the way I did. So I think it's important with a town, especially as we're growing in this size, that we really empower the people who we're trusting with these positions. So regardless of a weak chief or a strong chief um, position, I feel like we should be supporting the people that we're hiring to fulfill these roles. And whatever that may look like, I think is a case-by-case -case position, 
however i don't think it's right to think that everything is laid out as it should and then have a kind of vote that goes the other way or contentious um things that could have been brought up before uh, the actual vote. So I think that we really need to empower our leaders, the people we're hiring and trusting to do their job. Um, and that doesn't need, mean micromanaging. That's my stake. Okay, I'd, uh, once again, I'd like to thank all of the candidates for coming out, putting yourselves out there so that people can ask questions of you, and especially taking the time and putting the effort in to run for public office. Thank you very much. And I would just like to remind, remind everyone of a couple of things. Next Monday is um, a, a Margaret's meeting where you can all get your questions answered about the uh, budget and, <laughs> and everything you didn't want to know about the town budget. And uh, I believe that a week from Saturday will be the town meeting. Is that correct? May yep. 12th. Town meeting. May 12th. May 12th. May 12th. And that will be at uh, Glenwood. Glenwood. That will be at Glenwood School, starting at 6:30. Uh, six thirty. Six, six o'clock for the special. special. And seven six o'clock for the, for the special, seven. and seven. seven for the regular. Seven for the regular annual town meeting, and town elections will be the following Monday, the 14th. And uh, please all get out and vote for the candidate of your choice. Vote early and often. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much Thank once again for coming. Oh. Very quickly. You want the floor again? <laughs> oh, just very, very, no, I just want to touch on the, the question on managed growth that someone had submitted to the, the candidates. Um, some of you or most of you might be familiar with a managed growth study that CMRPC conducted at the end of 2017. The uh, presentation on that and the report are on the town's website. Everyone should take a look at that. And I also wanted to announce that they're going to be moving, CMRPC is going to be moving into phase two of this study with a fiscal impact study and build out analysis coming up later this spring. So I just wanted to announce that. Thank you. Thank you again and good night. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.